Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 This is going to be a, a common occurrence with me. When the Spirit of the Lord does what it wants to do, you may be seated. I know you've been standing. Thank you so much. I don't know about you, but I, I am, I am well, well aware of the times we are living in. I am not ignorant of the times that, that I am living in. Never seen anything like it. But it's given me a deeper, a deeper hunger to seek after God. Do I have a witness to it? Amen. It, I'm not running away from God. I, I'm running towards God. I'm not intimidated by what has come against us, but I'm going to my source of strength. Uh, uh, I'm going to the one who has all the answers. Amen. It's a great honor to be before you, precious saints, today. Great honor to the leadership, Pastor Johnson, Sister Johnson, Brother Quinones, and all the leadership of this church. I give you great honor. The musicians, the praise team, which has taken us to levels these last few weeks in, in the spirit. Amen. I give honor to them. Amen. How many have been sensing something different in the atmosphere? There's, there is definitely something different. I mean, we're, 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 we're not going back to what, how it used to be. And, and we're, we're not going back how, well, 10 years ago. No, we, we are living in an unprecedented time for this church. And we're going to pass and we're going to go through. And we're going to make it. And we're going to and we're going to reach heights that we've never reached 10 years ago. God's going to astonish us and God's going to blindside us and and God's going to give us the revival that that he has promised. How many believe that? How many really believe that? It's not a cliche, but but I can feel it. Somebody say, I feel it. We used to sing the song, I can feel it in my hands, and I can feel it in my feet, and I can feel it in my heart, and I can feel it all over me. Amen. But this, this feeling is not going away. There's something. It's rooted in fear. Faith. It's rooted in expectation. It's rooted in trust. I trust God's word. I trust that in the last day, saith the Lord. I trust the prophetic word that's been preached from this pulpit this last few weeks. I believe in the wave that's coming to this world. I believe it's going to start in California. I believe what the evangelist said. I believe it from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Hallelujah. I am reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2. Pastor Johnson has asked me to minister, continuing on the subject of apostolic culture. And I, as I was studying and praying and seeking God this week, found out Monday my son-in-law texted me. I was at work. He says, hey, Dad, uh, just got a, got, a, got a text from Pastor Johnson. He's, 
He's just wondering if, if you could preach on Wednesday. And he gave me the scripture to preach on, chapter 2 of Acts. So I said, okay. <laughs> All right. So I know they've been ministering from the book of Acts uh, here recently. And uh, I just feel, I don't know exactly how what's all going to happen tonight but i know something's going to happen amen I, i'm going to take a couple of scriptures i felt the lord impressed me on tuesday uh, acts chapter 2 verse number 12 through 16 then we'll jump to 22 and 37 to 43. it says and they were all amazed and were in doubt Somebody say they were all amazed and in doubt. Saying one to another, what meaneth this? They were all amazed, another translation says, and confused or bewildered, asking each other, what does this mean? I can hear him speaking in my own language. And they're talking about the wonders of God. Verse 13 says, Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, somebody say, but Peter. You might as well put your name in there. Come on now. Don't be afraid. That's what, that's what you've been called to do. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day or 9 o'clock in the morning. Now, there's probably some people that start drinking earlier than that. Probably some of you that are here were some of those people. Uh-huh. But God turned it around. Every time I turn around. How does it go? Brother Matt? Every time I turn around, he's making a way. <laughs> Every time I turn around, I like that when, when Matt sings that song. Amen. But this is that. But this is that. Which was spoken by the prophet Joel. My goodness. He didn't say, well, I don't know. This may be that. I mean. No, he, he stood up boldly. He said, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. I'm jumping to verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. This was still his address in chapter 2. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles, wonders, and in science was a man approved of God among you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourself also know. Where's my music at? Okay. <laughs> maybe, 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 yeah, maybe that's going to keep him awake a little bit. <laughs> Come on, son. Ah, I feel good here today. My goodness. My goodness. Verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Or they were just cut up. Their heart was just cut up. And they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? 
at verse 43, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And they continued faithfully devoting themselves to the instruction of the apostles and to fellowship, that's verse 42, and to eating meals together and to prayers. And a sense of awe was felt by everyone, and many wonders, signs, attesting miracles were taking place through the apostles. What a change from verse number 12 to verse 37 and verse 43. For a few moments, I'm still preaching. I'm still preaching. Oh, I'm still teaching on apostolic culture. And if we would have a subtitle, I would name it this. There's going to be evidence of God's greatness. There's going to be evidence of God's greatness. Apostolic culture. That's what I've been feeling around here. I said, I've been feeling apostolic culture around here. There are people, see, you, you can sense when people are praying, fasting, digging into the Word of God, where there's consecration. I walk into every service, and I never leave with a dry eye. Uh, I come into this place on Sundays, and I come on Wednesdays, and I can feel the presence of God uh, in such a powerful, powerful way. Amen. God is doing something in our midst. God is doing great things in our midst. I welcome you, those who are looking, who are watching online, wherever you may be around the world. Welcome to Revival Center, a place where it happens. A place where people get the Holy Ghost. A place where people still get healed. A place where people still are renewed and are baptized in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I, I just want to slow down here for a moment. And As I was reading the book of Acts or chapter 2 this week, I read it over and over and I said, God, I... I really need you to, to just bring something to light to me. And, and just I, I just need you to, to enlighten something. Give me some revelation and give me some insight. Uh, they have preached so much from the book of Acts. And there, there's got to be something. There is a reason why you want me to speak on Wednesday. And I felt the Lord emphasize, well, begin to deal with me about chapter 2 verse 12 and all the rest of the scriptures that I read verse 37 and verse 43 verse number 12 says this way and they were all amazed and were in doubt saying one to another what meaneth this another translation would have it they were all amazed and confused, asking each other, what does this mean? What does what mean? When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And begin when you get the Holy Ghost, you're gonna something's gonna happen. Amen. If if you if you've never spoken in tongues, then you don't have the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you don't get the Holy Ghost when you when you when you when you're baptized and say, "Well, I've got the Holy Ghost." Or when you when you say, "I confess Jesus Christ as my Savior," the Spirit of God comes in you. No, that's just when when they received the Holy Ghost, there was an 
initial evidence. And that evidence was that they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, the Holy Ghost is an experience uh, that, uh, uh, that you, if you've never had it, uh, you have never had anything like it before. Uh, it's better than a it's better than a Milky Way bar. It's ah, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 It will pick you up and it will turn you around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody's gonna speak in tongues tonight for the first time. I know it's not Sunday, but let me tell you, God is here and God is ready to feel in an apostolic culture. And if ah, anything can happen, anything can happen. Ah, if you don't have the Holy Ghost right now where you're at, lift up your hands by the authority of the Word of God and by the power in the name of Jesus. Receive the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Woo! Hello. Woo! I better hurry. Amen. Amen. They were all amazed and confused. Uh, hey. So when they heard him speak in tongues, and not only did they hear him speak in tongues, but number two, it says they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews devote men of every nation under heaven. When this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and they were confounded because this is why. Every man heard them speak in their own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? How hear we every man in our own tongue where we were born? And I'll let Brother Aguilera go through all those. <laughs> Amen. I'm not going to try to attempt all those words. Amen. So they were all amazed and were in doubt. That's where they started. They heard. They saw. They heard. They listened. And they became confused. And they were, no, they were amazed and then confused. And then in doubt. Just, what does this mean? What? does this mean they were in doubt this expression denotes a state of hesitancy or anxiety about an event so they were hesitant and had some anxiety we have never heard this before we have never been exposed to this before it's something it's it's something we have never come in contact with so how they felt can be applied as of those who are traveling and are ignorant of the way or hesitant about the road it kind of stopped them in their tracks man i'm not sure about this I'm not sure about this. <laughs> they were astonished at this. They didn't know how to understand it or explain it. I can't explain it. I can't understand it. Oh, but some smart Alex stood up and said, well, don't worry about them. They're just the old drunkers. <laughs> they just went to the, to the nearest cantina somewhere. And got them some some Quavo or something out there. That's all. Yeah, don't don't worry about that. Ain't, ain't nothing. Ain't nothing to it. <laughs> well, that's what they thought. Amen. 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 And this is where God impressed me. This is where God impressed me. And this is where God told me. And I'm gonna write. I wrote it down. And I'm gonna tell you. 
God told me this. And I'm not, don't just, just hear me out, would you please? I, I know, I, I know, it just, it, I didn't have too many frijoles, in the, you know, and then I thought all about this. No, 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 no. He said, we've got to get them. We've got to get them past the amazement and the doubt. We have lost too many who just had amazement and just had doubt and confusion and they sat on these pews and they left confused. Uh, they left uh, 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 with doubt uh, and, and they, they left also with amazement. He said, we've got to, <laughs> we've got to get them past the amazement and doubt. We've got to get them past Verse number 12, and we've got to get them all the way to verse number 37 when it says, and when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? God said, I'm going to help you. I'm going to do it. You're going to see an influx of people that are going to get past the amazement and past the confusion and past the doubt. And I'm taking them all the way to verse 37. And they're going to say, what shall we do now? That's apostolic culture. Come on, somebody. Amen. They come in one way and they go out the other way. Come on. They come in lost and they go out of here saved. They come out of here. They come in here sick and they go out well. They come out of here with sin and they go out here in the name of Jesus. They just can't be amazed. No, 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 no. We've got to get them past that. I don't know if this is good or not. I don't, I don't know, but I, I, I've been doing this for long enough, and, and I just know that me, me and God know what's happening here. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... So, 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 so how did Peter do it? So how did, how did he do it? It says, but Peter standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Uh. Then the next verse is when it starts getting really good. <laughs> so he must have raised his voice right there. But this is that. Woo! But this is that. You see, you see what, what God is trying to do? Take him from verse 12 all the way to 37. And how is he going to take him there? He's going to take him with somebody that's got number one, that's got some boldness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he said he stood up in front of them with his apostles. Uh, number two, he's going to, is he going to take him with somebody that has some certainty? Hey, they are certain and they are convinced that what they have can make the difference uh, in somebody else. Uh, they know that this is that. I've got the Holy Ghost, uh, and I know what it can do. I'm convinced uh, it can turn your marriage around. Uh, it it, it can deliver you from alcohol. It can deliver you from drugs. It can deliver you from prostitution. It, come on, somebody. It can heal your marriage. It can heal your family. Hey! You've got to be certain that what works for you can work for somebody else. You've got to be convinced. Woo! Uh, you, you know what I've been praying every day ever since these, these young evangelists have come? I've been praying, God, I'm going to have revival in Walmart. 
I'm going to have revival in the parking lot. Somebody said that. Somebody said that from this pulpit. I pray that every time I leave my house, and one day it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen in the parking lot. I'm going to pray somebody through the Holy Ghost. Makata, who makate, he or the who ta ta ta. I'm not playing games anymore, honey. I'm not playing games. That's too far gone. We're too close to heaven. We're too close to heaven. It's time to lay hands on them in the parking lot. Woo! It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen because what I got, they need. What I got, they need. Come on, somebody. Uh, number three, you got to be convinced. Uh, well, I don't know if I lay hands on them, maybe they, they won't get the Holy Ghost. No, 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 no. I don't know. You, you know what? It's time to get rid of every stinking spirit of pride. You know, I, hey, honey, I, I'm 60 years old. I'm going on 61 here in July. Amen. But you know what? I've I've been through, I've been through highs and I've been through lows, honey. And I and I I'm not ignorant of the devil's schemes. You know, I'm 60 years old. Me and the devil has had some tussles these last 60 years. Ah! That I know when he comes against me. I know when it's the devil and when it's God. Come on, somebody. Somebody's got to be convinced. Ah! I've got power. I've got authority. I've got dominion. I can make a difference in this world. Ah! Come on. Hallelujah. Ah. Woo. Ah. Come on. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Ah. Ah. I believe it was Matt that was saying it Sunday about how that devil, you know, hey, we, hey, Hey, he, we're not going to be intimidated. That, that was the song, right? Go ahead. The devil's, he's a liar, right? That's what the song, <laughs> come on, Matt. Come on, baby. Hey, the devil's a liar. He thought he had your wife, honey. He, ah, he thought he could take her. But God said, no, no, it's not time. Come on, somebody. We've got power. we got authority. You can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We've got to have this in the apostolic culture. We've got to have it daily. We've got to see it. <laughs> Paul wrote and said, in my speech, I'm almost done. My son-in-law said it at 8.05. I better quit. Well, he's going to come up here and punch me in the stomach. He's bigger than me, so he can probably will. Okay. Almost done, John. Almost done, son. I tell you, I feel too much of Holy Ghost. Woo! My God, somebody shout. Somebody shout. I've got apostolic culture. It's in me. It's in me. I can't help it. I can't help myself. I can't help myself. Woo! Huh. Also, in my speech, in my preaching, was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but here it is. This is what's going to take him from 12 to 37. <laughs> but in demonstration of the spirit and power. Let me just give you some insight of my personal and my wife's personal life up there in the nosebleed section on Sunday mornings, okay? It's called nosebleed ministry. 
That's what it is. Because we're looking at all the souls up there. And she tell me, honey, they're, they're new. I don't know them. And there was, there was, a, uh, there was a, a younger lady and then maybe her mom. He said, I'm going to go, go over there. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Maybe you need to get in, in, in pew number three uh, ministry. Pew number seven ministry. Ha! There's somebody on your pew on Sunday mornings uh, that needs you to lay hands on them. And you shall lay hands on the sick. Uh, and they come on somebody. Uh, it's time to break loose uh, into apostolic culture and to see God use us. <laughs> you don't have to wait for the license. No, 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 no. Right there in your pew. There is a revival in your pew. There is a revival in your pew. Pastor Johnson, if you're watching or you're going to watch later, pardon me, but I'm giving them some homework. Sunday, there's going to be revival in every pew. One, two, three, four. Woo! Come on. I feel that in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, Dana's going to look down to the left. He's going to see a soul over there. Dana's going to get up and is going to lay hands on that soul and they're going to start speaking in other tongues. Ah! Over here, somebody else is going to see somebody that's sick and they're going to go over there and lay hands and they will be healed. That's what God wants. That's what the church needs to look like. That's what the church needs to look like in this end time. I'm almost done. I got five minutes. Woo! You got it? That's your assignment. You're going to look down your pew. If everyone is saved, then you go to the next pew. And we're going to have an explosion on Sunday. In the name of people are going to be healed. People are going to receive the Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on. We are cultivating apostolic culture because what we have, they need. We can't let them leave confused and amazed only. No, they need an experience. They need an experience. Resistance come. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God. See, from here forward, from it's all going to be about the power of God. It had nothing to do with, well, Brother Amador's preaching here. Hey, that's, like they say in Spanish, that's not worth any cacahuates. Yeah, yeah, no, no. It's not who's preaching. <laughs> no. It's who's speaking. <laughs> all we are is in partnership. <laughs> Like I, before I preach, and I've been affirming this, all these evangelists, I said, God, I'm coming in the natural, and I'm going to meet you in the spiritual. I'm coming as a 60-year-old with a 25-year-old body. Ah! Come on, Brother Matt. Yeah. Hey, come on now. Come on now. Woo! Woo! And it came to pass when Jesus has made an end of commanding his 12 disciples. You can stand to your feet. I'm just about done. Only if you can't, that's okay. You're elderly, you're sick. I know. But if you can stand, you can stand. <laughs> it's 102. He said, and it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples. He departed thence to teach and preach in their cities. Here it is. 
Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples. He sounded like these other old folks in Acts chapter 2 verse 12, huh? Go see what's going on, all that chatter over there. What's, what's the big deal over there? I mean, I want to know what's really happening. Uh, hallelujah. And he said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or are we looking for another? Are we looking, my question is, are you looking for somebody else? Are you looking for another? Or do you got what it takes? Or do you got Jesus? Or do you got Jesus? Ah! Or do you got authority? And you got dominion? He says, do we look for another? <laughs> well, what? it's like these people, they were amazed. John was amazed, but yet he doubted. <laughs> oh, but here's Jesus. Matt, you can come up if you're going to sing something. Come on up. Oh, well, they are? Okay. Was, that's all right. I, I was going to give you the okay to come in jeans and tennis shoes and sweatshirts. I, I was going to surpass Jonathan and Pastor and say, come on up. <laughs> I hear it. I hear it. You're all right. And here it is. Jesus answered. I'm closing here. And said unto them, go and show John again those things what you do. Hear and see. Hear and see. Hear and see. You know what? You know what's going to happen around here? Because we've been preaching about, pastor's been preaching about, we've been fasting and praying. He cut top. He cut He People are going to hear. And when they come in here, they're going to see. <laughs> come on now. That's it, my brother. <laughs> I know you, you know what I'm talking about, sir. Come on, come on. Ah, ah. I feel the Holy Ghost giving me some, some affirmation right now. I, I know I'm just your homeboy, but this is about me and Jesus. What I say is because I'm very comfortable with what I'm saying, and I don't need to find a pulpit to preach. I don't need to, to think that I'm a prophet, nothing like that. That's all garbage and trash. I'm just giving you a demonstration of the power of God and his presence God came here to tell you right now that people are going to hear and see what's happening in this place and they're not just going to be amazed but they're going to be transformed by the power in the name of Jesus well what are they going to see preacher I'll tell you what they're going to see the blind receive their sight Come on, I'm stretching them, Matt. I'm stretching their faith a little bit tonight. Come on, come on. Are, are we apostolic or are we not? Right, 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 Brother Aguilera? Are we apostolic or we're not? Well, you might as well go somewhere else then. Go seek another. It says it right here. God says they're going to hear and see. What are they going to see? They're going to see the blind eyes going to receive their sight. The lame's going to walk. Come on. Come on, the lame's going to walk, the lepers are going to be cleaned, the deaf are going to hear. It's... You know what? I almost called you Lindsay for some reason. It's my other second, my fifth, my fifth girl. Yeah. Okay. It's easy. I, I, lost, I lost where I was at. See there? <laughs> All right. The lepers are clean. The deaf are going to hear. It's going to be a common occurrence. God sent me to tell you, this is what we've been preaching about. Apostolic culture. Revival in every pew. Revival. When you come to the church, you come to that. I'm going to have revival in my pew. I'm going to have revival in my pew. I'm going to have revival in my pew. Look out. I'm going to have revival. Somebody's going to be healed. Somebody's going to get the Holy Ghost. I'm almost done. Lepers are going to be clean. The deaf are going to hear. Oh, how about this one? The dead are raised up. Come on. Come on, Matt. Matt believes me. Anybody else? Anybody else believe? There you go. There you go. Come on. We're going to see. My God, I, I feel so much affirmation of the Holy Ghost on me right now. I feel such a knowing. I feel such a declaration 
I see for such a prophetic voice for my for this 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 audience. Ah, the dead are going to be raised, and the poor are going to have the gospel preached to. Lift your hands. I'm done. I'm done right now. Lift your hands. Apostolic culture, step into it. Step into it right now. Step, God, I want to step into that. I'm not looking for another. I'm not looking for another. I'm not looking for another wave down the street. I'm not looking for anything else down there. I got it right here. An apostolic culture, a demonstration of the power and authority. Come on! I wish somebody so would. Come on, somebody. I wish somebody so would. Apostolic authority. Step into apostolic culture. I wish somebody saw That's your fire. These altars are open. If you want to come, you want to pray where you're at. I'm done. Receive it. Receive the word. Step into apostolic culture. see it we're gonna see it not only hear it but we're gonna see it revival in the pew starting this sunday revival in the pew